We're actually filming the audience. It's not oh, like... Yeah. What? Uh -oh. <laughs> For everyone in internet land, my name is Master Farron. Um, I believe this is the fourth in the series of Meet the Peers. The series is set up to sort of demystify the peerage in Ontario and a little bit in the FCA. There's, there's sort of a barrier or a curtain of mystery that exists uh, between the peerage and those who are not in the peerage. Um, and unfortunately, there's not a lot of them. And we can't talk to everybody. We can't get one-on-one -on -one with everybody. And so this is a way for us to start a conversation between you, the audience, here in Inlands, and I have finally got together all five peerages in foresting people. If we counted all the peerages, we're at like eight. What are we? You got two. two you got two. Nice. Right? Maybe you said it was going to be math. Right? <laughs> math is hard. Come on, take off the boots. So my goal as moderator, because we're peers, we're known for talking. Um, and my job is to tell you to shut up if you get a little too long-winded. Um, to that end, these four fine folks have agreed to that. So when you ask a question, a peer may be in the audience, but we're going to be directing that to uh, the forum members. Of course, after this, feel free to approach any peer. They're more than willing to have a conversation about you, about that on a subject. <laughs> or about you in council. <laughs> Who knows? So we're going to start with Steerkar, former king of Ontario and a knight of our fair kingdom. Um, I would like you to take just about four or five minutes. Uh, your name, a little bit of your history, and then what does knighthood mean to you? No pressure. No pressure. All right, so my name is Dear Carr, you're all skulled, and I have been in the society since... Louder. Louder. And I have been in the society since 1989 in November, and I became a knight in 1994, right about 1994. Um, been king on tier one time, and uh, to me, uh, the SCA was originally about fighting and about hitting people with sticks and trying not to get hit with sticks as often as I could. Uh, and it's changed quite a bit. And being a peer has been a big part of that. It's really opened me up and opened my eyes since that time to what it's to being to what the SCA is about much more than just fighting. And so when you, people ask what what is a knight to me, uh, or what people ask me what I think a knight is, or what, what it should a knight be, you know, if you ask a hundred knights that question, you're going to get a hundred different answers. I take that back, you'll probably get about two hundred different answers. <laughs> but uh, being a knight to me is a number of things. And one is that it should be an example of valor. And it's, the, it's an exemplar of the knightly virtues. And in different knights, you see different knightly virtues, uh, better examples or worse examples. And, and uh, that may be a key point and probably a recurring theme is that uh, uh, if anybody recognizes that we're all human, it's us. <laughs> and we're our own worst critics. And on our good days, we're very good. And our bad days, we should be better. And, and perhaps that's what it means to be a peer. So as an exemplar of a knight, it's an exemplar of valor. I should be able to demonstrate a very high level of armored combat. And I think that's what people associate with, with knights. But I think a lot of people would be surprised that it's not just valor. You can be a pretty darn good stick, jock, if that's your term, and not become a knight. There are plenty of good fighters who are not knights, and it is more than that. Uh, being a knight is being a peer, and being a peer is being a teacher. And so the ability to communicate that ability and teach somebody else what you have is a big part of being a peer. When we talk about candidates and knights council, of course we talk about their fighting. But I think the knights have a tremendous advantage over the other peerages in that we are constantly testing our candidates, constantly testing our candidates. And the closer the candidates are getting to being knighted, the harder we are testing those candidates. But it's a, it's, it, we have something very objective uh, to look at, and that's fighting ability. And then we talk about that, we say, well, what kind of teacher are they? Are they a leader? Because people look at knights and people look at peers and expect them to be leaders, whether it's a leader on the battlefield, 
or on the tourney field or at fighters practice? Or what are we teaching the new people? How are we teaching the new people? Are we welcoming the new people? Because I think there are plenty of examples of of, of the opposite uh, of where uh, we have sometimes a reputation. The knights have sometimes a reputation of being elitist snobs, and and I hate to be that blunt, but that's sometimes that's sometimes what happens, and people don't understand that we're really just a bunch of dudes like everybody else, and if you want to talk to us, we're just as happy to talk to you as we are to anybody else. Talk to talk to us about something we're excited about. You want to talk to a knight? Go talk about fighting. <laughs> you want to talk to a knight? Go talk about squires. You want to talk to a knight? Go talk about about the learning process, about how to throw a wrap, about what it means to be a knight. And you're going to get some wonderful, wonderful answers, I hope. Thank you very much, dear Connor. And up next, one of the newest pelicans of our society, who also happens to be a Laurel, but will be speaking on behalf of the pelicans everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, Master of the Pelican Phelan. And being a brand new pelican, it's, uh, it's hard to say everything about it. Uh, knights, of course, are known for service. Uh, laurels are known for uh, arts and sciences. And pelicans for service, mainly about service. And uh, what are the, uh, one of the, the common things is a squire will go and say, I want to be a knight. A, uh, an apprentice will say, I'd like to learn all these things and teach. And they've always said a pelican should be quiet. <laughs> and not really talk about it and that's it's, it's a sad thing to say that but there are a lot of people that are doing the service and for some reason they have a hard time articulating that and i think it's one of the, the problems we have with the people that are in the service arm you want to do this work but you people are people they want to be recognized for their service and i think through the whole society we we have that problem where if you want to be in service or even in the arts and sciences, you can't be as blunt that you have this goal. You, you, you're expected to do the service, but there is a goal. And we need to recognize that. So I think having discussions like this, where you can, you can appreciably, you want to do the work, but you're human. You really want the appreciation of it. And I, I think well, that's, that's a session like this, we can be more open and talk about that. And another newish, not so new anymore, uh, master of the laurel, mistress of the laurel, Yulia, depending on what she's wearing. I don't think I've ever been a master. Egusum, <laughs> Yulia <laughs> Sempronia. I have been playing in the SCA since 2001, and I have enthusiastically in, uh, embrace this game though I don't have any particular or haven't had any particular interest in the Middle Ages. <laughs> I have <clears throat> I first made contact with members of, of the Inlands when I was taking a Latin class at my local community college and they were open and welcoming and excited about what they were doing and gave me all kinds of reasons to say yes mm. to, to this wonderful hobby. And so I, despite not being particularly interested, I, I <laughs> ginned up a, a plausibly medieval uh, gown and went to my first event and found out that, that I could pursue my passion, which is Roman culture. And I've never looked back. I, I have been tremendously excited about, about what I know and particularly gratified, because I love to teach, that, that I've had the kind of reception that I've had. What I want to speak about is finding your own passion for what you're doing, because <clears throat> It is the only thing that, that sustains you in, in any venture, particularly in, in your quest for, for finding who you are in, in this wonderful game, whether, whether it is 
classically medieval or an, uh, or another particular interest is it is so very important to to be centered in in what you love and enthusiastically communicating that to our our wider world the recognition that, that may come from this is incidental to the gratification that you will experience in, in the joy of your art and your service and your competition because I'm a, a big believer that, that as peers we carry aspects of all of the other peerages, the chivalry of the knights, the service of the pelicans and and the dedication to the arts and sciences that the laurels bring and we'll figure out what you guys do. <laughs> That's We're still working on that. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, we have the pleasure, I didn't know that he existed over here and then someone hooked me his direction and I was just overjoyed to realize that I would have all five represented at this particular juncture. Um, Master of the Order of the Defense, Jack. Uh, yes, I'm Jack Tyler, uh, one of the new Masters of Defense. And, and uh, a, as you were saying... <laughs> what do you do anyway? <laughs> it's, a new, it's a new period, and we're still figuring out what, uh, what we do. <laughs> it's still a matter of debate. <laughs> But uh, we are we are uh, outlining that and uh, deciding. A lot of that was was built into our white scarves. Our white scarves had certain certain uh, you know fighting standards, just like the knights, and certain uh, uh, demands as far as as chivalry and service. And we're probably, I'm sure, going to incorporate most of those just as they were used uh, with a white scarf. Um, I also have a number of other peerages, and most of that is because I consider myself, well, I've been around a long time to start with, <laughs> and uh, if you are around a long time and are active, you tend to do a lot of things. I consider myself a renaissance man, which means I do a lot of things, I just don't do any of them really well. <laughs> but if you're around doing them long enough, eventually they'll give you an award for it, probably. <laughs> Yeah, that's the message we want to send. <laughs> Just stick around, folks. It'll happen. Uh, so, so, so I might get a word if I stick around and live as long as you have. <laughs> Another 30, 40 years, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. The secret to immortality is not dying. My, my other main uh, main uh, advantage is I, I'm really good at not pissing people off. That's another important aspect. So that that is actually leads into an interesting topic. Um, what happens if I piss someone off? Um, are they going to hold it over my head for ever and ever? Is there a statute of limitations? Is there? How does the council deal with uh, conflict between one person and another? And I, I most of the up to, most of the know. councils certainly try and, and and have a statute of limitations and say, you know, okay, so, you know, eight years ago, <laughs> this guy was a real jerk at, uh, uh, at uh, Crown to somebody, me, <laughs> well. yeah. Um And we, we try and, all of them that I've been in, try and, try and say, okay, that was eight years ago. How, how, are, how are people doing, how is this person doing now? And often we will, you know, if there are problems with somebody being a jerk or anything else, or, or failing in, in uh, um, just, uh, you know, their fighting skill, any of the other skills that they need, uh, we try and go to them and talk to them about that, if they're close in, in all the other things. If there's something holding them up, we normally, uh, we'll try and make contact with them and say, really like you to, to, to uh, work on uh, uh, your uh, kingdom service on a little bit higher level and make suggestions to them. Or we would like to see you pick up 
something other than a Madu and fight with it. <laughs> you're looking at becoming a, become a knight and any of the other ones. So we try and, but that doesn't always happen. Right. So yes. Sometimes. But I would argue also, and I and I've said it many times, is that uh, that there there has to be a statute of limitations. You have to allow people to change. Uh, I I thank God all the time that I'm not held <laughs> to the things that I did as an 18 year old. <laughs> and I really doubt I'm the only person in this audience that feels the same way. And also feel very strongly <laughs> that if there is no such thing as redemption, then we would have no business calling ourselves the Order of Chivalry. Mm. So, uh, I, yeah. I want to expand on that because I'm, I'm also your kingdom seneschal, and mm -hmm. and with that, I have occasional bad news to deliver, to, both to groups and to individuals, and it is a courtesy to, to do that in, in as straightforward a manner as as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. To, to, to say, here, here are the issues, here's, here's the problem, and, and if you have to de deliver this decision, do people the honor of, of respectfully giving it to the destroyer? That, that being said, it, you know, it's, it's a wonderful way to clear the air if, if you can, if you can, have a respectful discourse and disagreement with individuals, and and walk away with your opinions unchanged, but but respectful of each other, and and that goes double when you're a peer, because we owe it to each other and and everyone else in the kingdom to to be the exemplar for courtesy. In all all aspects. What really this time and space is for you guys, the audience. So I'm going to take a few questions. If I see the questions dying down, I'm going to pose some questions of myself that I've thought of uh, for our panelists. But what was your first peerage, Diane? Knight. <laughs> uh, Knight, followed by. More personal, ago. more personal. Um, Pelican. Pelican. And then Laurel. Yes. And then Master of Defense. Yes, unless we left something out. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Just curious. Oh, thank you. That, that's a good one. You said there was five, and I, I didn't hear all five. Indeed, the fifth royal is the royal peer. So those who have sat the crown. Um, oh, those who have already sat as a crown. Right. That and is the, the retirement the title would be. Uh, I'm a jarl or, or count, jarl. which is the equivalent, right? Yeah. And second as a duke. Indeed. Second right. time okay. as a duke. Right. Right. Thank you. Other questions from the audience <coughs> on any topic relating to the peerage? <laughs> the lovely giant. Do you think that? Gosh, how can I say this? When you're when you're being recognized for one, it's often easy to cross over into all of the other peerages uh, with the same for the same reasons. And how do the peerages separate those things? Interesting. Wow, good question. It's like question. a royal peer. Yes. <laughs> well said, madam. I would actually like to start with Phelan, who has not spoken much. Um, having been fairly newly minted to both the peerages, a few meetings I've attended, they really sit down and say, what do these things do? You might make a list of what they're doing and say, okay, this is more arts and sciences and teaching. This is more maybe fighting and teaching armoring related to fighting. So they, they, do, they do have people that sit down and break it down. And there are a fair number of people on these councils that have been kings and queens, they've been multiple peers, and they really have kind of a handle, especially the ones that have, I listen most to the, the counts and the dukes, because they've been to all these meetings, they've had all this counsel, so they, they carry a pretty heavy weight, I think, as king and queen, and after they're recognized. Yeah, it's a it's a unique perspective, and 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 
the question is actually very well asked, and because a lot of the things like Phelan is a great example, where just a <laughs> tremendously talented lampwork bead maker, right? But he donated some eight, nine thousand beads over the course of many years to the kingdom for kingdom site tokens and for other issues. And, and how do you how do you separate? And not to mention his work with the well, you. You've been recognized with peerages, right? But, <laughs> no, but, but no. That, as an example, just as the beads. Well, what are we? What are we recognizing? His artistry and his teaching ability in those beads, or are we recognizing the fact that he has donated thousands of hours and giving those to the to the kingdom by making all of these beads, uh, you know, for 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 them? And so you kind of separate in that way. But also, each peerage has their own criteria. And that criteria, that bar changes depending on who's in council. Over time, we've been looking at this more heavily, and that's it's hard to harder to hit a moving target, <laughs> to be honest with you. But the way it, when it operates the best is is this is my criteria for for our criteria for becoming a pelican this, as the council, right? This is the criteria for becoming a uh, order of the Pel member of the order of the pelican. And does that person, regardless of how well or how poorly they're doing in other fields, do they meet that criteria? Mm -hmm. And that works best. And at the same time, the Laurels Council is talking about the same person, saying, look at all this fabulous stuff they're doing. That's wonderful. These are these nebulous things we call peer-like qualities. Uh, and uh, But what are we holding them to? And that's the standards of the Laurel Council, as it is right now. And that's when it works the best. And, and sometimes, you know, when, when we're considering a peer, the, the, and, and peer-like qualities, there's been a whole lot of, of, of talk about it. Uh, oftentimes we say, well, we're taking that discussion off the table because obviously they have that. And it gives us, an, it, it gives us a greater focus for, for specifics for that particular order. Another question? Uh, and, and it's really kind of a follow-up to this one in some ways. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Don Jack mentioned about the uh, the new order of defense was the, 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 the white scarves were asking for service. And isn't that kind of a crossover with the pelicans? That's It is, but most of the fighting orders, you know, want, want their people to be out there actively teaching, actively being marshals. Uh, okay. Doing that sort of service. So That's running, that kind of service. Yeah. yeah. Teaching, so running running fight practices. You know, and those okay, so. services related to the order, not necessarily. In cases, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. And Other it's services. related to all of the orders. We're, Absolutely. I mean, you're sitting that crown and you're doing how many hours a week on business? Look, yeah, and crown's a little different, though. You know, it, but, you're, sure, but, but keep, we look but at keep in mind, I, <laughs> and and this is the this is the business side of the society that we are incorporated as a nonprofit educational organization. So, the 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 teaching and the service that we do is all related to our core mission. Okay, that's true. And and the and the Knights Council looks at that for service too, not just in terms of the fighting, but for example, the uh, uh, Royal Retinues. Because a big part of the top level squires are expected to serve on the Queen's Guard or the King's Guard or whatever the and how did they do on that? You know, did they are they are they good with their commitments? Are they are they honoring their commitments? Did they agree to become a Queen's Guard and then never show up at an event or never help set up the Royal Pavilion? I mean, these are the things that's a kind of a recognition that the peers in general tend to be the the things that make things happen in the society of the Pelicans. I can I can't imagine the SCA running without the Pelicans, you know? I, I, I cannot imagine it. And that these people that are doing that type of stuff should become Pelicans. I can't imagine how ugly the SCA would be without the laurels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you sure you want to go back to the pictures? Please? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> and where they've brought us in, in 50 years, especially, right? You know, and the level of fighting that's happened is the same way. And the level of rapier fighting now as well. Uh, but. Uh, but it's 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 that's a peer like quality service, the commitment to your word, and the fact that you are becoming somebody who's making the SCA happen, not just enjoying the ride, is part of becoming a peer. But one one of the aspects that I think brings us all together is is we are and should be leaders of 
our society. But keep in mind that, that you, you, your leadership is only as good as, as your ability to inspire others. And if, if, if any of us look around and, and don't find anybody who, who is cheering us on and, and, and following, then we've, we've failed at our mission. One of the things when you take the oath for any of the peerages, they ask you, when I stated it, I am a companion of the Order of the Pelican or the Laurel, and I swear as a peer of the Kingdom of Ontario. And those are two different things, really. Mm -hmm. The companionship is a recognition of the other people doing it, and the peerage really is, I think above all, a, a recommitment to your kingdom, to the society, to provide this service, to provide this leadership. And it's a, it, it is a burden, it is a job. It's a job gladly taken, I think, by all of us. And I, I, I would love to hear, uh, we think of the various different peerages, but in fact, we are all peers of the realm. And sometimes uh, people get this, like, here are the knights, here are the laurels, here are the pelicans, uh, here's the new the Master of the Order of Defense. Um, but in fact, we are, all, we are all equal, and we are all serving in the same way. We are all those leaders. We are all this force behind the world that's happening. And though we talk individually about characteristics, we're all sitting in the same playground. So your royal peerness. <laughs> How do the other orders, the other peers, affect the leadership of the kingdom as you're sitting on the throne? Are they all relatively taken equally, or do you listen to their counsel for just their niche, or how's that work? <laughs> I think there's going to be a follow-up wow. over here. Super good question. <laughs> Super good question. Uh, and, you know, every king is going to have and every queen is going to have a different answer to that. But i got to say, it's a very foolish king who doesn't look to his officers. Um, yeah. You know, e even the kingdom seneschal, for example. <laughs> if only few were around. No, especially the kingdom seneschal. It's, a, it's really a teamwork kind of a thing. There's a great, um, so in terms of officers, and then you talk about peerages as well, but in terms of who am I looking to for advice, it, it, uh, uh, per, perhaps the best example or the best metaphor that was given to me was the kingdom is very much like a company, uh, a, a private business, right? And there's an owner and there's a CEO. And the owner kind of sets the direction and maybe the figurehead or the people that, the one that's seen in the public. But the person who's the executive and who's making things happen is the seneschal in the kingdom. Uh, in the kingdom, and so and then you can break it down however you want. But without the direction, without providing direction, the CEO is less. Without the owner, the CEO is is meaningless. Without the CEO, the the owner is ineffective. And so uh, using the resources is tremendous. Now, in regards to setting the tone for the kingdom or setting that, you know, it's it's the same kind of thing. It's what. Uh, who has the, who has the good advice? And it doesn't matter to me as king if the person giving me good advice is a pelican, or about anything, or is a laurel, or is a knight, or is not a peer at all, but just is giving me really good advice. And so I, I don't know that there's any favoritism favoritism there at all. Now, one thing I do, you do rely on, or you should, is prior royal peers <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and, and uh, just like anything else uh, try and uh, avoid the mistakes of your predecessors mm -hmm. not like you didn't know make new else. mistakes that's okay yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just try not to make the same mistakes. and i believe our kingdom central well and and speaking from the administrative side of things <laughs> i i cannot hardly second jarl steercar's uh, words because in order to deal with complex problems, you, you have to have a, a, a sounding board that you trust. And the peerages really provide 
wonderful context for for some of the thorny issues that that both the kingdom seneschal and the crowns have to face and and there's got to be a level of trust there that you can go to by the same token there there are responsibilities that that neither the crown nor the kingdom seneschal can shirk and and it's the, the trust has to be well established to, to the point where you can say, I hear what you're saying, but this is the decision that I'm going to make. And, and that one of the biggest challenges that I think in, in, in peerage councils and also when, when we're dealing with various problems that, that face both the Crown and the Kingdom Center shall just say, I, I hear what you're saying, I respect your point of view, but I'm going to take this in, in a different direction. And, and find, finding that level of respect is one of the biggest challenges when you have advisory boards, which in fact, all of the peerage councils are. We advise the Crown. We, do, we don't say, you, here's what you're going to do. That's very true. That's, and that's culture, totally not And the culture might be different in other kingdoms. Sure, My, and peerage cultures and royal cultures are very different in other kingdoms. This kingdom is very traditionally a royalist kingdom, and the knights are the extreme examples of that royalist attitude. However, uh, it is the duty of a peer to give their opinion to the crown, give their honest opinion to the crown, sometimes when not, when not asked. <laughs> because it's very easy to find a yes man, but somebody who can tell you how it's actually gonna go is is the most one of one of the most important jobs of the peerage council. Awesome. Yes, Your Majesty, we can do that, Your Majesty. However Right. Here and that's a great and I've had that line before. I'm not going to tell you no, Your Majesty. I'm just going to tell you what's going to happen if you do this. <laughs> those words have been on the lips of Kingdom Center. <laughs> okay. Other questions? Not from Stjarna? <laughs> I see her itching. <laughs> Yeah, do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, nobody else. Don't want if nobody no else one else has a question, yes. I want to hear what she's got to say. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the impression that people are scared to talk to you because you are up here? Mm, what a great question. I personally don't let anything affect who I am, and this is who I am. But there are some that change. But I think overall. They tend to be eager to talk to people, but it would be nice for them to know why you are eager to talk to people. And are we all eager to talk to people? I do. You can hardly, <laughs> Not shut, here. You can hardly <laughs> shut me up. So. I'll vouch for that. I guess my point would be that we're all on the SCA, and that takes a certain type of person. Um, and. Sometimes those type of people are a little socially awkward, um, but know that in general peers really do like to share that, in, that information. And it, it may be a little hard to get past that first little bit, but once you jump past the hi and hello and, oh, what's that? Then you're gonna have a, a 30 page dissertation on the cool thing that they're doing. I talked to them. <laughs> I think peers are certainly welcoming and, and talking to people. I think where some of that um, feeling from people comes from is often they're very busy also. And so often they will come off as abrupt sometime if they're good. So what's I go to a crown tournament the and yeah. I'm in meetings all morning. You know, I'm not available. How do we approach up here? What is what is a good way? What's a good way? Sneak up from behind. <laughs> sneak up from behind. Yeah. Why don't you just remember trip, that trip the time up. peers are, are the same as everybody else. <laughs> they just have a different role. So, I mean, you, know, you have peers that are very good at talking to people, and you have peers that are extremely introverted and very uncomfortable talking to anybody, whether it's another peer or not. And so talking, just recognizing that this is, we're all just a bunch of guys that really like this 
ladies. They're all just a bunch of people <laughs> that really, really like this game, you know, and have liked this game for long enough to be noticed at it. Uh, so uh, approach us just like anybody else, and that's, <coughs> when and that's the, fine. And and I I resonate to the lots of meetings to go to. One of the things that I think is a great conversational opener is, is I have a question. Is this a good time for you to talk? Yeah, sure. Do you have a minute right now? Yeah. Because, because no, nothing makes me happier than, than sitting and watching the world go by and, and connecting with people and, and hearing about what, what they're interested in. It makes me happy. But I don't. Sadly, I don't have enough time right now to do that. So, so if if you can get beyond the the, the titles that, that some of us wear, and and just say, I've got an issue or or a question. Can can we sit down and talk about this? Great. <laughs> Meet me back at my pavilion at at five o'clock. And bring gin. <laughs> <laughs> Booze. That's what we're saying. Booze. It's a great conversation. <laughs> no, but 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 <laughs> just it, it. Any conversation is is a ball that you pass back and forth. And and we as peers, we don't want to hold on to that ball all the time. We're going to toss it back to you and 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 ask you what you're interested in. But it, but it, it's got to be at a convenient time and place. That's true, and that can be really hard. You say royalty's <coughs> unapproachable or royalty's hard. It's because they're really busy. <laughs> yeah. Really, really, like you wouldn't believe how busy they are. I've seen that. And uh, just like Jack was saying, you know, uh, that they might be just busy at that time. Like maybe going up to a night and initiating that discussion right before the semifinals at Crown. <laughs> it's just bad timing. It's just, whereas 45 minutes later after everything's done, he might be completely or she might be completely approachable and very happy to talk to you. Yeah. But, Dep but, depends you on know. if they want or not. <laughs> yeah. or, or even if they're just watching because the knights are watching. That's true. Right? So, and very invested. And, and we do have non-reactive proactive mechanisms to reach out to people um, i know in the laurel we have a variety of teas we reach out at competitions and displays um, and i'd love to hear other ways that your orders reach out instead of just react to folks coming out. well one of the ones we do have councils where we talk about people nicely well, typically like, i'm sure but uh <laughs> I've been in councils where we're, we're talking about people that could be candidates and we're talking about the good things and the not so good things sometimes. Challenges. Challenges, very good. And uh, oftentimes if there's a specific challenge, somebody, maybe their peer if they've got a relationship or somebody might be designated to work with that person. So that's where we've been watching. But I'm always, I love to just talk. And I love people, and everybody's got their geeks. I mean, if you go talk to Steer Car about fighting or some of his art, you can't stop. You can't talk, stop him. But uh, um, if you find, especially something we're interested in, and, and we have the time. And the knights use the squire's journey for that a lot, and it's a lot more open. It's called the squire's journey because it's for squires, but it's open to everybody, and it's a great opportunity for other fighters. Say, I want to fight in this because all of the knights are in either fighting or watching and uh, getting a chance to directly assess what's the what's the level of fighting in the kingdom. How's this person doing? How's this person doing? Holy cow, where'd this guy come from? He's awesome, you know? Uh, but it's open to everybody. If you want, and it's a great way to meet a knight if you're a fighter, is to say, go to a crown event and say, I would like to fight in the squire's tourney on Sunday. May I be your squire for the day? And that means something a little bit different to every knight, but it's just super rare to have a knight say no, no say no to that. So it's open to everybody, and it's one way where at every kingdom event, uh, with the exception of Twelfth Knight perhaps, we're there and we're doing it. But the knights, like I say, I think have an advantage over the other peerages that we're always at fighters' practices. Twelfth, there's a fighters' practice at Twelfth Knight. 
<laughs> feel a little put down. Come on in. Come on in. Uh, not, not put down, just, to, just that we have this inherent advantage because there's something right. that's so much more objective that we can measure. Sure. Well, yeah, and you're constantly reaching out. And we're constantly measuring it. <laughs> Don Jack. Um, how do you guys see reaching out to find new order of the time? <laughs> How do we? How do you proactively look well, and find your community? Um, again, we have a lot of the same advantages. The, the, the right. nice we're, we're fighting those people often. Yeah. Um, part of that is, is is going to places where people haven't gone, or you haven't been for a while, and, and, and seeing who's there. But uh, we do the same. We do the same thing. Uh, our tournaments and things like that, as far as fighting, but also we're talking to regional people from different regions to find out which um, rapier fighters are are teaching actively, mm -hmm. are running tournaments, and are doing the service part. We usually rely on. People that are in those areas, the Masters of Bins, um, and, and before that, certainly White Stars, uh, where, who is, who is uh, in a certain area that you're from, who are, who are the ones who are out there dragging people out to fighters' practice, running the tournaments, uh, teaching at fighters' practice, and, and just generally doing the service part of it also, which we don't see as much other than those people that are immediately involved in continuing the that. Right. If we don't happen to go to specific areas or that area is far removed from us. So that's one of the ways as, as that we go. As, as far as some of the other peerages, it is harder. Uh, uh, there are laurel competitions, but they're, they're not, you know, you don't see them a lot. You see them, you know, the people that are involved in that competition. You say, well, let's talk to this person and that one, and we get a little bit of feel for that. But a lot of that also, as well as Pelicans, is those peers that are in that area are are bringing reports in and trying to pick up information, and or we're saying we need some information on this person uh, who in that area can can give us some feedback, uh, and we have to go out and search for it. And sometimes we're better, and sometimes we're worse at that. <laughs> So uh, we certainly make that effort, and uh, hopefully, it, you know, hopefully we keep up with it. But uh, sometimes it's it's hard to hard to get that information, which I think leads into. I know during your reign there was a concern about reaching out to people who are further away from Central Frontier, and I'd love to hear from the various peerages how how has how have the peerages reached out? Or what have we been doing? to try and reach to those further ends of our kingdom or, or parts of our left hand side. Well, I think about this a lot, so I'm just going to uh, jump right in. Do it. Because, you know, we have a bit of an anachronism, right? We, we do historical reenactments, but a, a whole lot of, of how we communicate with each other is using 21st century devices, right? And one of the things that, that Particularly, and, and this is an apt discussion for the Inwes, and, and we have many isolated branches and isolated people throughout our, our very large kingdom. It's, it, there are some opportunities that we have, particularly in, in sharing of, of information, in teaching of, of our craft uh, in, in an online forum or via uh, documents in the cloud. Uh, there have been some uh, groups that have, have experimented pretty successfully with online ANS nights. And as you know, we have interest in, in forming branches clear up in the Yukon territories where, where your next neighboring branch is, is over 23 hours away. The, the, the techniques and, and the, the tools that we have can bring us together when we're not fortunate enough to, to, to sit together in, in this beautiful setting and, and share teaching face-to-face. -face. Thank you.
She hit what I was going to talk about. <laughs> but events like this are a good example too. You know, uh, it's true. You know, there's plenty of places where there's not a peer, or there's only one peer, and there's been only one peer for 12 years, and that peer can get burned out. You know, so the uh, an event like this is is a great example where we see people traveling from way up north. We see people from traveling, uh, traveling from the west side, purposely making the effort to come over here. Multiple laurels have come over here to this teaching event to say we're coming and to support. And they're all causing people. trouble over there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Hush, we're recording. <laughs> but as a show of support and as to reach out, because it's very, it's a very different experience to learn the arts and sciences in Dragon's Lair, where there's. I don't know, 847,000 laurels versus in uh, versus in Wellsmere where there's, I don't know, two, three, right? Or something, or, or Waste Peak where there's three, and one of which is active, you know? I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult thing. So them making the effort to come over here and teach those classes or to take new apprentices is uh, on this side is a huge step, a huge step. A question. Uh, since I'm clearly not a fighter, um, how important is it to be a protege or an apprentice on one's path to peer? So for the I mean, because because I used to think. I, I used to think that if I just struggled along and struggled along and struggled along with my art, that I might possibly be recognized at some point, and it d does not appear this is so, although, uh, admittedly, you know, my art needs work. Um, but, I mean, I've been in the society for 20 years and done a lot of service, and, and, I, don't, and I don't have a metric to tell me if I'm even close. So what can those of us who are not peers do to find out where we might be and what we might need without having a, a master or mistress of our own intercompetitions? That's a tough question. So <laughs> well, that's, that's, really that's a really to... tough question. Oh, service, I can tell you that it's not impossible to be a peer of any kind. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible to be a to be a knight without being a squire without being a squire first. It's not impossible to be a laurel without being an apprentice or a pelican without being a protege first. But I can tell you it's a much more difficult task. Because exactly what you said, I have no idea where I'm at. I have no idea what I'm doing wrong, what I should be doing to further me along that path. And that's exactly where that value is the value of that relationship is. And that relationship is very different for every knight, for every master, for every pelican, for every laurel. That, that, is, that is a different relationship. Some people, it's very close. For me, a squire is a member of my family. My squire is an open invitation to my home, and I expect them to just show up occasionally. And once in a while, they can call first, but I don't really care. <laughs> you know, uh, camp with me if available, fight with me on the war field, come practice at my house or a regional practice with me, come do this with me. And, and it's a very intimate, very family-like relationship. And that's different for every for every category. But but to do that without taking that path is is much more difficult because if I have my squire and my hearing what the knights are saying about my squire, I can say, look, we need to work on this. We need to get you to more events. We need to do this for a little bit. All right. And if you don't have that voice in the council and that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with somebody who can help you with that, you're really kind of floundering in the dark. And that can be very, that can be hugely frustrating, hugely frustrating. What am I doing? I mean, I'm, I've been doing this for 20 years, and you're doing a great job for 20 years, right? I mean, people know you, people respect you, people love you. But you're, but I'm not, a, but I'm not a laurel, I'm not a pelican, or whatever the case. What, what am I doing wrong? And that's when, if you're not willing to do that relationship that you need to be friends with somebody who who is uh, somebody you can trust uh, I am NOT an apprentice right but I do a lot of arts and sciences and I really really love it 
and I have people that I love and people that I trust to say, uh, steer car, you, you really ought to kick up your research a notch, or whatever the case may be, right? And I should be wise enough to say, that's my friend on the council telling me this. And so there is another option as well. But that leads into a great question is, how do you establish or how do you initiate a relationship with somebody that you're interested in, whether it's a knight, whether it's a laurel, or whether it's a, a master or mistress of a pelican? How do you initiate that? I think it's a good question to bring up at this point. Maybe we should talk a little bit about, about how that's done. Actually, before we go into that, I'd like to say it has certainly changed over the years. I was not an apprentice to anybody. I was not a squire even, uh, but that was early on, and less people, less people, and <laughs> one, of the, one of the things was there were less people, right? you pretty well knew a lot of the people that were in the kingdom that were very active, now it's different, there's more people, and from other areas you don't know these people, so, so having, having feedback from, and just in general, it's certainly a good idea to have someone, someone that you can talk to and someone who can guide you with whatever your chosen path might be, whatever you're interested in doing. Um, so, uh, it's depending upon the individual person, often it's done different ways. I usually uh, originally waited for someone to come and talk to me. Now more I'm going out and, and, and talking to people about it. So, I don't know about other people. What do you think? Don Jack, when you were saying you you originally, you mean as a, a peer, you originally waited for people to come up to you? Yes. To initiate or, that yes. type of relationship. Okay, to, to, okay. Right. Just, just to get the order uh, uh, right here. Someone who was interested in being a squire come up, I would wait for them to come to me. Okay. But that's, that's very traditional. I know you have something to say, but that's very traditional, and right. there are a lot of peers like that. Like, I'm watching this guy, gosh, I really hope he asks me to be my, to be my squire, hmm. you know? Uh, but I'm not going to ask him. And some knights will say, screw that. Whatever. <laughs> or somebody else is going to say, I want to be mine. <laughs> so. I want to address the question, both as a Roman and, and as a woman. <laughs> I've, I've, I've mentioned when I introduced myself that, that I found a really welcoming ground to pursue my particular passion in Roman culture and, and in the last 10 years. The, the personal joy that I have found in, in my research is that when I first started out, it was a fairly solitary interest. But, but when, when I started communicating my passion and it started coming back to me when I was teaching, and particularly when you, one of the most satisfying uh, aspects of, of this weekend was co-teaching about Roman cuisine with Fina. Because all of a sudden there are other people who share my interest. And one of the, the things that I think is so important about the period is, is generosity of spirit. Uh, we, we, we talk about that as being one of the peer-like qualities, but I think, I think it cannot be uh, too much emphasized that, that generosity means sharing your knowledge in, and not hiding your light under a bushel. As a woman, that can be extremely challenging. Mm. When, uh, one, one of the, the most enduring pieces of advice I had during my vigil was, don't sell yourself short. And, and too many women, particularly of, of uh, shall we say a certain age, <laughs> are, are socially trained to, to downplay our, our talents and our knowledge. And the trouble is, when you when you say things are of little value, people pretty much take you at your word. So it, it is it is so very important to say this is what 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 I I love what I'm doing. I want to tell you all about it. 
so I'm going to pin you down in the class for a couple of hours <laughs> and and infect them with the same joy that you have for your craft and never ever sell yourself short. So, so for instance, at, K at Kingdom, at, C at Crown Events, I often go to the heraldry meetings, since after all I am a Sherpa to, to, to heralds, and, and they go around and they introduce one another, and they say who they are and what their role is, and I just say, I'm a pusher. <laughs> I push people to get their arms. I remember. Them. Pardon? You also draw the arms, and that's what we keep trying to get you to tell people. Oh. You also <laughs> help draw arms, and you help encourage people to display their heraldry. And that's a lot more than just being a Sherpa. Well, no, Push, but I'm, I'm, I'm a pusher. <laughs> I'm a pusher. You can talk to her about drawing your arms. And talk to. There's a lot of heralds around here. We're in the. We're all through the woodwork. Yeah, I have, and I, I may not drawing be able to help with. Good with the designing your arms or conflict checking or do your names, but boy do I know the women to point to. <laughs> Help you. Okay. <laughs> so you uh, that was a wonderfully intense conversation. Thank so you're you very saying much. that too much but, humility is not a good thing. But approach yeah. and ask is what, uh, what I would say. Approach if you're ask. interested in that relationship that with somebody, mm -hmm. find somebody you like, find somebody you want to hang out with, find somebody you trust, find somebody you respect and approach them and it's hard <laughs> when diane's son philip asked me i don't know how much he'd been drinking <laughs> when he asked and we knew each other very well but that can be a very humbling yeah. experience to say hey i i i would really like to be your squire i'd really like to learn your art or will you help me on this path and but uh, there's no substitute for doing so. If you want it, pursue it. And an opener to that discussion is, is always, I, I want to ask your advice <laughs> about an issue that I have with, with fifth century Roman cuisine. I'm always <laughs> going to be really flattered. <laughs> And, and, and it, it, it is such an opening to have a, a, a dialogue which, which gets you to know what this person is like. Because it's got, it's, in the end, when you're forming relationships, particularly of, of such an intensity, you really have to like and respect the person who you're, you're seeking to form a relationship with. Someone who hasn't asked a question this evening. I was just wondering, so is there any, like, pressure in the peerages to find protégés or squires? <laughs> like, if you're, if you're a peer and you don't have one, and people are like, what are you doing? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if, if, if that's the case, about a pressure to, to have one. I would say, I would say, in, in when you're first elevated, there are some people who will pressure you to wait for a little bit yes. mm -hmm. and yeah. get your feet yeah. under yeah. you right. and right. figure out what this means pressure, before you start right. taking people. Mm -hmm. uh, but that pressure. said, it no. goes the other way too. I was squired to a knight who had been knighted for, I don't know, three months? <laughs> <laughs> or something, four months maybe. So the relationship, you know, at least from the knight side, I don't see, I don't see that pressure. There's always a question, are you? Are you teaching? You know? Yes. Are, are you helping out? Because you should be. Right. But that doesn't necessarily mean are you taking? Are you? Are you seeing a bunch of clients? Because it's a big commitment. And what's going to happen? I got. I, oh, I'm going off to graduate school. Now's a bad time to take squires, <laughs> <laughs> right? Or, or you're, you're or I'm going financially to broke right now, or and I've been unemployed sit on for the, six months, on the you know, whatever. <laughs> or sit on the throne. Yeah. That might be a good yeah. time to take squires. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, stop to carry. Well, stop to carry, but. <laughs> And I'm still fairly new at it. I've, I've got a couple of students. Uh, here's my advertisement for, for students. I, I, I love to, to form relationships with people. I always start at the student level. And af after a year and a day, we, we reevaluate it. And if, if it expires, that's, that's fine too. Depending on what else go, is, is going on, and unfortunately, as Kingdom Center saw a lot, I, I recognize that there isn't a whole lot of really active teaching that I can do for for people who are my dependents. Yeah. 